how can you get started in cybersecurity, even if you have no experience and you don't want to take the boot camp route, the military route, or the college route? Now, I'm actually old enough to remember a time when we didn't even have email. So back in the 90s, when the internet was just taking off, anybody who could code HTML could create a website. And people who didn't know anything about the internet, but knew they needed a website, were basically hiring anybody with a little bit of web design experience. And today, cybersecurity is kind of like that. A lot of managers know that cybersecurity is important and they know they need to hire people to do cybersecurity, but because cybersecurity is so new, they don't even know what interview questions to ask. So a lot of companies rely heavily on certifications. So the path that I've laid out will ultimately get you your Security Plus certification, which should be enough to get you an entry level job at maybe a small to mid sized company. But before we get started, just give me 30 seconds to pay the bills here. This video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Right now, they are offering a three-year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee just for Ryan Macbeth channel subscribers. So click the link in the description below to take advantage of this deal. A VPN or virtual private network helps you stay safe online by creating a secure tunnel from your computer to the VPN provider that hackers and rogue members of the government can't penetrate. I personally use it to stay safe online when I'm debunking Russian propaganda, and there really isn't a better deal out there. Three years for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Click the link in the description below to take advantage of this deal. Thanks for sticking with me. Now, the end result of this video is you receiving a path to get a Security Plus certification. That is the end result. The Security Plus certification is the standard that's going to get you that entry-level job. Now, you probably already have a Windows computer, so we're going to start with learning the basics of the Windows file system. Take a look at a video like Windows File Structures and Paths by Professor Messer. Learn where everything is located and learn what certain folders and directories are used for. Learn how to create a user, set up simple security protocols, and things like password complexity requirements. You also need to get comfortable learning the command line. Now, once you get comfortable doing that, you need to learn how to do the same thing on Linux. Now, what's kind of neat about Linux is that with Linux, you can run this virtually on your computer. Virtualization is a core concept in computer science right now, and this allows you to run multiple operating systems on one computer. It's really going to help you when you're learning because you can set up an entire virtual network of Linux systems and play with them and configure them just like their real physical computers. So to start, take a look at something like the How to Use VirtualBox tutorial. This will show you how to run Linux virtually on Windows. And once you've got Linux on your computer, now you need to learn how to use Linux. So take a look at the video, Introduction to Linux and Basic Linux Commands for Beginners. Get yourself familiar with the Linux command line and watch that video. Once you're familiar and comfortable with the Linux command line, then I want you to watch this video, Linux File System Structure Explained. This will give you more insight in the Linux file system. And once you do that, I want you to compare your knowledge with the Linux file system and the Windows file system. So watch this video on Linux versus Windows file system structure compared. This will allow you to explain the differences between the Windows file system and the Linux file system because they are different and you should know what you're talking about if you're entering a job interview. The next thing I need you to do is learn a programming language. Not because I expect you to start programming software, but you may need to automate some of your networking and cybersecurity actions with scripts. Let's say you have to change the password requirements for 100 users. You're going to spend all day clicking on a user and changing their password requirements when you could just write a simple command line script that'll do that automatically for all 100 users. Scripts create efficiency. So it's my suggestion to start with PowerShell. This is the main scripting language on Windows. Start with something like basic PowerShell commands for beginners. This video should be able to get you started in basic, basic PowerShell. Now, PowerShell is available for Linux, but it's not guaranteed to be on there. So for Linux, you need to learn a special kind of scripting language called Bash. It's very useful for automating repetitive processes. This tutorial on Bash shell scripting should get you started. Now, I know that some people watching this are chomping at the bit to start saying the word Python, and that's fine. 
Python is a programming language, if you haven't heard of it, and there's nothing wrong with Python. Python is extremely easy to learn, and it's very useful. But Python isn't guaranteed to be on every single machine you work with. PowerShell is if you're on a Windows machine, and Bash is if you're on a Linux machine, but Python may or may not be on the machines you're going to work with. So it has a lot less utility, and it's not going to help you pass the Security Plus exam, which is our end goal. Now, once you have the scripting down, learn how to construct a small virtual Linux network. Create a few Linux machines and network them so everybody can talk to everybody else. And perhaps use one of those machines as a gateway to go out to the public internet. Use Stephen Gordon's video, Internal Network of Linux Machines on VirtualBox. And once everything is set up, lock those Linux machines down with TechLore's video, The Complete Linux Hardening Privacy and Security Guide. Now, by the time you've reached this point, you're able to navigate a command line on Linux and Windows. You know a little bit about scripting languages. You can set up virtual Linux machines. You can network them. You can harden them. You're probably ready to take the Security Plus exam or at least start studying for it. So purchase an online course and study guide. Study and then take the exam. Okay, you've taken the test, now you gotta get a job. The best advice I have for you for getting that job is to put yourself out there. Join some online and live cybersecurity groups and become an active member. Actually, go to these events and contribute and talk. Personal connections are what get you jobs. Trying to find a job by applying online is like trying to go duck hunting by shooting a shotgun up in the air and hoping that you hit a bird. Now, if you're an introvert or you're just not good at interviewing, consider joining Toastmasters. This is an organization that teaches public speaking and it's super cheap to join. It's like eight bucks a month. Millions of people have gained more confidence and learned how to speak publicly with Toastmasters. So that's it. There's your path. Now, this path is available in the pinned comments below or on my website, go to ryanmcbeth.com if you want like a printout of the steps that you need to take in order to follow this path along with the YouTube links. Do you have a tip for breaking into cybersecurity? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.